Namaste. This is a little presentation on how to protect the environment using the principles of Vedic Dharma or the spiritual philosophy of India. So the environment of course means nature and whose nature is it? It is God's nature. Or did anyone else create it? Did anyone else put it all together so that it operates the way it does? In fact mankind is striving to figure out all of the intricacies of its functionality. In the all the inventions or devices we produce, all the ingredients and resources that we use are all given by God. The elements we need to make big buildings, bridges, ships, cars, or the fuel to operate them are also all being given by God through the process of nature. And we need to show the proper respect. To think we are the proprietors of everything is the illusion. It is our pride that makes us think we are so intelligent when actually the very brain with which we think is not created by us, but has again been provided by God. As everything is created from the Supreme Creator, then we should certainly have a high regard for everything as the expansion of God's energies. This not only includes all of our fellow men, but all creatures, as well as all aspects of the planet. Violence toward the planet, in the form of not caring for the environment, misusing and polluting our natural resources, not managing the land and forest properly, are all forms of disrespect toward God and the blessings that have been given by, to us. So we should, uh, once again, if we expect God to continue giving us the necessities of life or the means to acquire them, if we are going to ruin them or do not know how to care for them properly, why should we expect more of the same blessings? Uh, so we must never pollute our resources or waste the food that we have. We should also see that even the earth is a living being, full of life. The globe is a mother to us in that regard, since she supplies all that we need. All of our food, water, and resources for sustaining our own lives, as well as supplies for shelter and clothing, all come from her. This is why that she is called Mother Bhumi, according to the Vedic tradition. How she reciprocates with us in regard to what she provides depends on how we treat, honor, and care for her. The imbalance in nature, such as the greenhouse effect or the changing climate and weather patterns, are reflections of the imbalance in the consciousness of the humanity that pervades this planet. Once there is balance and harmony in society's consciousness and the way we regard and treat the ecosystem, this will then be reflected in the balance in nature. Then many of the storms or natural upheavals and disasters will begin to cease. The environment and the material creation are supplied with all the potencies to produce all the necessities that we require, not only for humans, but for also all species. Human society should not consider itself as the only enjoyer of all God's creation, and that no other creatures have a claim to it. Humanity is actually a minority species when we consider the many types of creatures that are sustained by the environment. If we manage the ecosystem properly, it will continue to produce everything that we need. However, if people who have no genuine spiritual understanding start exploiting the earth to take whatever they want in any way they want, then the supply of resources starts decreasing and the earth, being a living organism, stops producing or responding to the needs of society as abundantly as it used to do. Then there will be shortages, droughts, and forest fires, and all the other things that have been going on, which uh, cause subsequently the prices on commodities to increase. Gradually more people will become poor, and poverty and starvation will spread in different parts of the world. Then we see fierce competition for whatever resources can be attained. When many people die while fighting over land and commodities, or temporary and ever-changing political stances, then all the bloodshed from the dead, dying or wounded, is like offering Mother Earth blood sacrifices to drink. She is pained by this, as are so many other higher beings that watch the activities of humanity. Rather than respecting the Earth and cooperating to share her resources, when we fight over them, it is most heart-rendering for Mother Earth. Thus, the earth and the Lord's environment are not properly appreciated and maintained, or are exploited by ungodly people. Then scarcities and excess pollution is the result. However, nature itself can go on nicely, except for the interference of ungodly men.
As a society controlled by godless men gathers all the resources from the land as fast as possible for power and quick profits, it may appear to be a mighty economic gain at first, but in time it is never enough. As demand grows, scarcity raises its angry head. When the environment is not respected or cared for properly, there are also changes in the various species that have existed for thousands of years, even extinctions. These are all signs of further unknown changes in the future that will be revealing themselves to us when it is often just simply too late. There may be times when the earth needs to cleanse herself of unwanted activities or from the pain she suffers from society's wrong aims of life. She may move in various ways to adjust things so that humanity is not so out of balance and will be forced to reconfigure the value systems they are dis uh, that are displayed by humanity and make them geared more toward the real goal of life. When earth reacts in particular ways to relieve her from the weight of unwanted activities or segments of society, we should not miss the message. A society that is too spoiled often easily forgets the real reason why it is here and why we are here. The proper vision is that everything is the property of the Supreme Being. If we have any possessions or wealth, we should see that we are only borrowing them for a short time. We certainly cannot take them with us when we leave this body. Thus, someone, else's, uh, someone else will obviously take all we have when we are gone. The ultimate owner of everything is the Supreme Creator, and thus the proper way to use anything is in the service or consciousness of God. The same goes for taking care of the environment. Everything belongs to God, so ultimately we should take care of it as if we are simply being watched by God and only taking care of His property, while, by God's good graces, it produces the resources that we need to live. After all, as the Lord in our heart and as the Supersoul of every living being, He is observing everything that we do. This is the Vedic concept. So, all of one's land, home, wealth, and possessions belong also to the Supreme Being, though we may wrongly think that I am this body, and all that belongs to it is mine. Thus, a person of wisdom should not see anything as separate from the Supreme Lord. In spiritual consciousness, such a person will see everything, whether it be fire, air, water, the earth, the sun and stars, all living beings, the trees and plants, the rivers and oceans, and, in fact, everything that exists as an expansion of the energies of the Supreme Being. Even while actively engaged, with so many objects and undertakings in this creation, a person who sees the whole world as the energy of the Supreme Being is indeed a great sage of wisdom. Therefore, we should care for the environment as if it is not ours, but God's property, and in this way assure ourselves that it will continue to provide all of our necessities for many years to come and into many future generations. This is the Vedic view, and by adopting this view, naturally, we secure the resources that we'll need for many, many future generations. In the meantime, you can study more of this Vedic philosophy by uh, observing uh, my website, which is at www.stephen-knapp.com or stephennapp.info, and uh, read the articles that are there or buy some of my books to uh, more deeply explore this Vedic philosophy. So I hope that may give you some uh, uh, insight into how we can best uh, take care of uh, the environment, which basically is a way of taking care of ourselves. So thank you very much. Namaste and Jai Shri Krishna.